Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the E3 backpack from Silent. And this is a really interesting bag in that it focuses a lot on digital privacy. It includes some accessories that are meant to keep your devices more secure, but on top of that I was also very intrigued by just the appearance and feature set of the bag itself. So in this video I'm going to be talking about my experience testing it over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar items that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I am definitely a big fan of the aesthetic that was the first thing that caught my eye when I first saw the bag. It's the type of style that you know I would typically gravitate towards, so it's kind of a modern techie vibe. It's got a little bit of a tactical flair with some of the webbing that's on the front, but it's not overwhelmingly technical or functional. It's a versatile look that I can pretty much take anywhere that I want to go, whether I'm just walking around the city, going into the office, or traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. The exterior fabric is a Challenge EcoPack sailcloth, so it's made out of recycled water bottles and is going to offer a ton of weather resistance. You can see here it's got kind of that X-Pack sort of texture to it. It also gives the bag a pretty cool look. And it's a material that's going to hold up well to rougher usage. It just feels super sturdy. The bag is a little bit heavier than I would have expected. It comes in at about 4.6 pounds, but it makes sense given how robust the materials, the padding, and all the features are. And I think it's a good trade-off for what you get for the weight, uh, but just very solid. All throughout, you got Duraflex hardware and of course, aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, you have a handle on the side and top of the bag. So that's gonna allow you to carry this like a briefcase or rest this on your luggage when you're traveling. Uh, these are made out of a really premium feeling sort of seatbelt like material. It's got a nice amount of cushioning. It's very easy to reach down and grab the handles as they're not super flush against the bag, but they don't stick out awkwardly or anything like that. So good implementation there. And then on the other side, you have an external water bottle pocket, which I'm always a big fan of. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that you see in a lot of my other daily bag videos. It fit in there pretty comfortably. The compartment is a little shallower than I would have liked. So if you have a taller water bottle or you wanna use it for a tripod or something like that, it will stick up out of the top a little bit. You'll have to make sure that it doesn't tip over or anything like that when you place the bag down kind of like this. But you have a nice amount of elasticity in this compartment so it will kind of adapt to the items that you wanna place on the inside. And then that also helps keep the pocket flush against the bag when it's not in use to maintain a cleaner overall look. On the front of the bag, you have the silent logo, which is blacked out and blends nicely into the appearance of the bag. And you also have a row of webbing that's gonna be a good spot to attach additional accessories with a carabiner or something like that. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 23 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I really like that I can hold all of my daily essentials comfortably and there's still some leftover space without the bag feeling overwhelmingly big. And then I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it still maintains a pretty slim silhouette, which makes it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. Very robust padding on the straps. They're really comfortable right out of the box. On the inside you have a breathable fabric to help prevent moisture from building up. And then you also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps you also have a nice loop where you can maybe hang your sunglasses or clip on a light. And then you have an adjustable sternum strap that's gonna help distribute the weight. This has a magnetic fidlock buckle that just snaps into place and then you slide it down. So really nice implementation on the buckle there. Very reliable and easy to use. And then you also have a pocket on one of the straps that's gonna be a great place to store something like a transit card or your headphones when you wanna grab them a little bit more easily. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable, excellent implementation here. You have a nice padding distributed all throughout, same breathable mesh that we saw on the straps, and you also have some elevation on the padding to create these air channels to provide you with some ventilation while you're walking around throughout the day. On the back paneling, you also have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. 
And then one last thing to call out on the back is that you have this hidden zippered compartment here that's gonna be a great spot for items that are a little bit more sensitive to kind of keep them protected from pickpockets. I believe this is also an RFID protected compartment. Yep, you got the little indicator there. So this is the type of place where I would typically store something like my wallet with my credit cards or a passport. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. Really useful and effective layout. Starting off on the front, you have two quick access pockets. First up, you have this one that has a vertically oriented zipper, which is always great so that you can swing the bag around and grab something from here without taking the bag all the way off. Nice amount of space for smaller items that you might wanna grab a little bit more regularly. Currently what I have here is a lightning cable and power brick to charge my phone. And then I also have a battery bank to keep my phone charged while I'm on the go. Above that, you have another zippered quick access pocket. This one has a flap that comes over the zipper to give it just a little bit more protection. And you have these nice zipper pulls, which I forgot to call out earlier, that have kind of a hypalon material, so very tactile, easy to grab, and then nice amount of space here as well. I like that it has some volume, so it's gonna be able to handle some bulkier items that you're gonna be grabbing regularly during the day. So in here, I currently have a GoPro, and then I have some Apple AirPods, and I also have my sunglasses with their case. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No internal organization here or soft fleece lining or anything like that. So a pretty simple compartment, but again, nice amount of space. It goes down about the length of my fingers. And I was impressed that you could comfortably use this pocket and this pocket without their volumes interfering with each other. Up next, you have a larger admin style compartment. It has a zipper that goes down pretty far so that you still have some good visibility into the compartment, some internal organization here um, on the flap. So you have a D-ring that's gonna be a good spot to clip on your keys or a multi-tool with something like a carabiner. And then you have a couple of zippered compartments, just a nice variety here for holding smaller items that you know aren't, you don't want floating around the rest of the bag. At the moment, I have a pen in there, a notebook, it's got a field notes. I also have a deck of playing cards and I have my Apple Magic Mouse. And then below that, you have an additional zippered pocket. And again, pretty impressed with how the volume is distributed on these, even though they're right up against each other. This front one has a little bit of a gusset. You can see it kind of comes out. So you can comfortably use both, which isn't always the case. Great design there. In this pocket, I currently have a little manicure set that I typically have. And then I have the Peak Design mobile tripod that I've been using a lot. And then I have a little dongle that I use to connect my phone to HDMI. Moving to the rest of the compartment, the first thing I'll call out is that it does go all the way down to the bottom, which I typically like in bags as it just gives you some extra space and flexibility for larger items that you wanna reach more easily while traveling. This could be where your liquids or toiletries would go, a jacket. At the moment, what I currently have here is a packable rain jacket. And then I also have the Bellroy pencil case, just some items that I figured I had some extra space for, so I tossed it in just to show the capacity. So really like how much this comes up. And then you also have a few elastic slip pockets here. So I like the elasticity as that gives you some flexibility with what you can store and then it kind of molds around the items that you place on the inside. And this one here on the left, uh, and I'll just show you, you can fit your whole hand in there pretty much. So really good amount of volume. I currently have just uh, my Samsung portable hard drive with its USB cable. And then next to that, I have the Tom Bin ghost well pouch, but with the amount of volume that's included here, this would definitely be kind of the perfect spot to store my MacBook charger and cable. And then up at the top, you have the first of the two Faraday bags, which is one of the most unique aspects of this backpack is these modular accessories. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the bags themselves later in the video when I also pull out the laptop one. This one is more meant for a phone given the size and it pulls out really easily with these magnetic Fidlock buckles, it attaches quickly, you just pull up to remove it. So really like how smoothly this ends up working. And then the fact that you can just kind of pull this out, use it separately from the backpack if you don't want to carry it with you, or you can leave it at home and just have a little bit more space here. Might've been nice to maybe have a zipper pocket or something to kind of be able to use this space when you're not using the pouch. But I imagine that if you buy this bag, most of the times you may be using the pouch and then it attaches in there very easily. The next area we're gonna take a look at is the laptop compartment. Again, this has a well-protected aqua guarded zipper. 
It's kind of a top loading compartment. It doesn't open up fully flat, but the zipper goes down enough to give you easy visibility and access to your devices or anything else that you have stored in here. In this compartment, you have kind of a slip pocket that doesn't have a ton of padding or anything, but is gonna be a good divider to store some documents, a folder, maybe even a tablet, particularly if you have it in a case. And then you have an additional Faraday bag. This one is meant to hold up to a 16 inch laptop. I'll pull it out in a second, but most of the time how I would typically use this is kind of treat this as the laptop sleeve for the bag. So I could reach down even with the sleeve on the inside and grab my device for easy access. This is gonna be able to hold up to a 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see it really kind of gets swallowed up by this sleeve. So nice amount of protection here. The sleeve is padded. It's not as rigid as some of the laptop compartments that we've seen on other tech bags, but it still does a good job of just kind of keeping your device protected, even from some bumps. So when you place your bag down, your device is gonna feel fine. And so pulling the sleeve itself out, again, you have the same Fidlock system that we saw on the phone sleeve in the front compartment. So very easy to attach it when you wanna carry this inside of the bag. But then if you wanna actually take it out when you're working, or if you just wanna use the sleeve, maybe with another bag, you can pull it out easily. Those magnetic buckles are really easy to use. I like the seamlessness of this system. It has worked great so far. You can get a better look at the sleeve now that it's out of the bag. So pretty simple, uh, minimal sleeve. Again, you have some padding, you have the silent logo. If you wanna just kind of carry this on its own, it's gonna look nice. And then pulling my device out of the sleeve, you can get a better look at the size difference here. So plenty of space there. And then this sleeve does come up a decent amount. So, you know, even if you have something a little bit thicker, then a MacBook Air should be able to fit in there comfortably. And so now that we're kind of talking about both sleeves, I'll bring back the phone sleeve, which is a little bit smaller. You can see definitely meant to hold, you know, one of the larger kind of modern phones. You could probably put an iPhone uh, 14. Is that the number that we're on? 14 plus. I have an iPhone 13 Pro, which fit in there very easily, but nice to see that there is some flexibility for larger devices. And then the Faraday sleeves are a pretty interesting accessory. It's definitely not something that I'd ever really considered a need for, but nowadays with you know companies tracking you in so many different ways with the GPS um, and then with criminals getting more sophisticated with RFID scanners and so many other things that I'm probably not even that well versed in. It's great to see somebody thinking about this type of protection for your devices. And on Silent Sight, they have a nice list and summary of all the different things that this blocks. Like I said, GPS, Bluetooth, RFID scanners. It's supposed to be able to keep your device protected if there's an electromagnetic pulse somewhere. So, you know, really kind of hardcore electrical protection. This is the type of thing that I think definitely like a spy who's trying to avoid um, detection from some foreign government might want to use Jason Bourne. This could also be great if you do a lot of international travel and you, you know, work with sensitive information. It's just extra peace of mind that you might have. For somebody like me, I might not be as exposed to some of the risks, but it doesn't hurt to have them. It's just an extra added bonus of the bag. And so far, I think they have worked really well. And I'll be curious to kind of learn a little bit more about the Faraday cage and bag technology. The company has some good blog posts on the different uses and reasons that you might want to check these out. So I'll make sure to include links to those in the description below if you want to read up. And I was struggling a little bit to figure out how I could kind of test these and to understand what the difference would be between this and say just putting my phone into airplane mode. I've listened to enough podcasts and watched enough TV shows to know that when you turn your phone off, you're still able to be tracked. There's softwares and technologies that allow that to happen. So that's where I imagine something like this really comes in handy is for that extra layer. Uh, so what I you know, did as kind of an experiment was I actually tossed an air tag into one of the bags. That's something that I know for sure I can track from pretty much anywhere. It's GPS enabled. And so that kind of helped show to me what you know benefit I might get if somebody was trying to track me, if there was an air tag near me or something like that. So pretty interesting sort of functionality. 
Coming back to the bag, now that the sleeve has been pulled out, you can get a better look at that slip pocket and also just at this section of the bag itself. Nice amount of padding here. So it really feels like your devices are gonna be well protected. The bottom of the bag also has some nice reinforcement. So nice compartment there, but definitely something that I would use primarily with the actual sleeve inside. And then the last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is this main compartment. It doesn't quite have a clamshell style opening, but it opens wide enough that you still have plenty of visibility and you can easily grab whatever you need. And with 23 liters of capacity, you can really hold all the items that I typically like to carry. It's a pretty simple layout here, so works well with modular packing. What I currently have just resting in this area are my Beat Studio wireless headphones with their case. And then I have my DJI Mavic Mini, also with its hard shell case. And then I have my Evergood Civic Access pouch, which is my preferred remote working pouch. And so you can get a sense there of the volume that's provided. At the top, you have a really cool, kind of large compartment that's great for accessories that you don't want floating down to the bottom. In the company's videos for the bag, they kind of call this the headphone compartment, so it could potentially work well with some over-ear headphones. For my Beats, I typically just carry them in that hard case. They could probably fit here okay with the amount of volume that's provided. I actually think that this is the perfect pocket for something like the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, the one liter. It kind of fits in there almost perfectly. So this is one of my latest organizational pouches, has a lot of good accessories that I use regularly, and it just fit in there super comfortably. But this compartment just really like the amount of space that this has. Reminds me kind of of the built-in field pocket in the GORUCK GR2. It has this nice mesh so you can see what's on the inside. And yeah, you're gonna be able to store a ton of different stuff here. Headphones, pouches, electronics, chargers. And with the amount of space that's offered, this is a bag that's gonna work really well for minimal travel. I could definitely toss in my normal kind of double-sided compressible packing cube, an extra pair of shoes, a dop kit, and easily use this for a longer weekend trip. But one of the coolest additions when you purchase this bag is that it actually includes its own packing cube. And this is a pretty big packing cube. It's actually able to hold all the items from my two Peak Design packing cubes. It's kind of the equivalent of those two packing cubes next to each other. So I really like that it includes this accessory. It's easy to load this packing cube out. It has a handle at the top and then it just pairs really well with the backpack for travel. You just toss in the packing cube and then in the top zipper, this might be a perfect spot to store the dust bag that Silent includes with the backpack when you purchase it. It has this really nice bag that's great for storing it when it's not in use, but it can also work as a laundry bag when you're traveling. And then with the volume that you have in this top compartment, I can store that there. I could use this to store some socks, some toiletries, and then combined with the packing cube, I'm pretty much set for a trip and the bag still maintains you know, a slimmer silhouette. I can still use the front compartments, the sleeve, and then when I arrive at my destination, I just open the bag up, remove the packing cube, and I'm ready to use this for my day to day. So really love the versatility of this capacity, the compartment, and then the fact that they actually include the packing cube with the bag. That's a really nice bonus and combines well with the other accessories that we've been showing throughout the video. Love the layout and just the design of the entire bag. That's been one of my favorite things of testing this out. You know, you have the nice bonuses of the Faraday bags and you know, that digital privacy. But at the end of the day, this still has to work well as a backpack. And I think that it does a phenomenal job. Definitely the style that I typically really gravitate towards. And if you're looking for comfortable, versatile, durable bag that's gonna offer some nice bonuses and just look great, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the E3 backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $330, which definitely isn't cheap. You do get a lot of value for that price point given that the bag includes the two removable Faraday bags, the packing cube, and it's just really solidly built. And it's gonna compare well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Boundary Supply Errant Pack. That one doesn't necessarily have the Faraday bags per se, but it is a really modern, 
versatile bag that has a nice organizational layout. It's very comfortable, durable, great laptop protection. And it also has a really cool ecosystem of modular accessories. So there's pouches that you can configure with the errant pack. It's got magnetic attachment points. So, you know, you can configure it to meet your needs very well. It's a durable bag. And if you're looking for a tech backpack that can go into pretty much any environment, that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is the weatherproof commuter from the Ridge, which is a little bit more of an underrated bag in my opinion, but it's got a really solid feature set, very weather resistant materials. It's got a clamshell style opening. It's a little more compact at around 20 liters, luggage pass through external water bottle compartment. It has an RFID safe hidden compartment. So it has a little bit of that security for your devices and it's gonna come in at a lower price point. So if you're looking for something compact, weather resistant and reliable and you want to save a little bit of money then that's going to be a solid option to consider another bag this made me think of is the air city pack pro which is one of my favorite tech and everyday bags that's come out over the past year just as a really sleek modern aesthetic very weather resistant comfortable to wear excellent laptop protection and organization for all of your essentials it doesn't have some of the more kind of privacy focused features of this bag but it's just a really slick modern bag that's going to look great in any environment again it's going to be comfortable keep your stuff protected and if you just need something that's going to work well in an office setting and uh, you know it's just going to look great and that's going to be one of the best options that you can check out and then the last option that I'll mention here, given the higher price point of this bag, is the GORUCK GR1, which is another really reliable everyday carry bag that's got a rock solid build quality. It's gonna be with you pretty much for the rest of your life. Really protective laptop compartment. It doesn't have the same kind of digital privacy features that this one has here or as many compartments. It's just a really simple bag, clamshell style opening. If you get one of the bags with the Molly webbing, you can configure it with pouches. Uh, but to me, a bag that's gonna keep your devices and your stuff secure is one that's never gonna break on you, it's gonna be with you. And for that, GORUCK is one of the best in the business. So if you have a little bit of a higher budget and you're looking for something simple and reliable, then I definitely recommend you check that one out as well. With that being said, the E3 backpack holds up really well against all those options. And if digital privacy is really important to you or you travel a lot or you just wanna have a little bit more peace of mind and you're looking for a comfortable and versatile bag, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the E3 backpack and how it compares to some of the other tech bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.